It's a little over two years since Harry Fry got his license and he's now firmly established among the top trainers in the country. We're here at his Dorset yard to find out about a few horses it could pay to follow this winter. To go from 20 horses when we started out to, to just about 60 now is, uh, yeah, we, we couldn't have dreamt of really. And to, to have some really exciting horses in the yard as well is, is even better. We've got, got room for a few more, always, always got room for a few more. But uh, yeah, no, we're very happy with, with the team we've got at the moment and uh, we're building the team of the staff as well. They're getting experience and they're growing with us. So it's all a, it's what it's all about. You hear it time and time again, it's a team effort and without them, uh, none of it's possible. So uh, we're all growing together and it's uh, really exciting. And are you the sort of trainer that at the start of the season will set yourself clear targets, goals that you want to achieve in the year? Oh, I think, yeah, I always want to, to better last season's tally, um, winners and prize money for sure. Yeah, it's, that's, that's the natural sort of target and uh, we, we basically try and win as many races as we can. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll just run through a few of your, your stable stars. Uh, first of all, Activial, what's the plan for this one? Well, he, we haven't seen him yet. Uh, he had a slight hold up in the autumn, nothing too serious. Uh, and you've seen him school this morning. He's in, in really good form. He's uh, on target for the Labrook hurdle at Ascot on the 20th December. So uh, he obviously we're very pleased with his win in the Donus last year at Kempton. Uh, he, he does really appreciate the softer ground. So we, that's why we haven't been in a great hurry to get him, get him out. So hopefully as, well, as long as conditions stay as they are, he should have his, uh, have, his, have his ground on the 20th. And you missed Cheltenham last year. Is that because you didn't think he'd like the track, or just yeah? Well, we thought we we thought we'd go to Aintree instead. Um, we just thought he'd be, he wasn't quite ready for Cheltenham last year. Um, but Aintree came up a bit quick. It, well, it was good ground. It was, it was perfectly safe ground. It was, it was lovely spring ground, but just not what he wants. Um, he's he's a real mudlark. Bit of a puzzle, uh, won a, a mayor's bumper at the, the open meeting at Cheltenham, what's the plan for her? Yeah, and that was, uh, we were delighted with her reappearance win and she's all set to go novice herding now and she'll, she'll stick to mayor's company um, to begin with and we've got, got a race either at Exeter on the 18th or we could go for a, a listed mayor's novice at Haydock on the 20th. Fletcher's Flyer won a Punchestown bumper last year. A good winner under Ruby Walsh at Ascot um, the other day, and Ruby seemed pretty pleased on television afterwards. Yeah, I haven't seen that, so um, you obviously you've seen that, I haven't. But um, no, I mean, he, he did it well. He's, I mean, he's a three mile chaser in the making, um, grounded out, and uh, uh, obviously we were disappointed to get beat first time, but it wasn't the end of the world. It's all about progressing through the season, and um, we haven't got any fancy targets at this stage. Uh, more of a concern on the day was he was slightly hanging right um, but hopefully oh, we think we sorted that at home and uh, so we'll, we'll just give him a chance to, to get over that race and before before he reappears probably either just after Christmas or into the new year. And you say you've, you hope you sorted the, the hanging right, what would you have done to correct that? Well, just a bit of physio more than anything, um, he just seemed to be catch it just a bit tight behind the back of the saddle, so um, physio's been hard at work and uh, hopefully that's, uh, we won't see the results till we get him back in training, and, and work, but we'll only see him back on the race course when we're happy with him at home on the gallop, so, uh, but it's nothing too dramatic, which is the main thing, it certainly didn't stop him winning well, um, but obviously he's going to be going up up in class, life's going to be getting a bit harder. Um, got to iron out these issues now. Highland Retreat was a really classy mare over hurdles last season. You've got a novice chasing yeah. uh, with her this time around. Uh, just got nabbed last time at, at Exeter close home. Yeah, she got. She let the winner all bar the last two strides, but um, it doesn't mean anything, does it? So. Uh, we're pleased. I mean, she took a big step forward on her first run over fences, um, and uh, she'll she'll revert to Mayor's company now. And uh, there's possibly go to Huntingdon on the, on the seventh for a Mayor's novice chase. And there's the new listed Mayor's chase at uh, Doncaster on the 29th of December that we've hopefully got in our sights if, if all goes well next time. Would she possibly go back over hurdles or is it fencing all the way for her? No, I wouldn't, wouldn't rule anything in or out, um, but at the moment we are focus is on the novice chase campaign for her and certainly on the evidence of, of Sunday she's, she's more than capable of winning her, her, her races over fences and uh, especially uh, back against the mares. And Jolly's crack tit looks a really exciting prospect. Where are we likely to see him next? He will hopefully reappear next in the Tolworth hurdle at Sandown just into the new year. 
Um, yeah, obviously delighted. He's two from two over hurdles. Uh, he's made a couple of mistakes, noticeably noticeable mistakes at the second last on both occasions. But actually, what was more impressive, he was able to pick himself up after after that. Certainly, the last day, pick himself up after that mistake and, and still hold on and win. Um, so yeah, it's, they're novices for a reason. They're, they're learning. It's experience. Um, you're doing lots of schooling at home, but. Frustratingly, he's great in all throughout the race. It's just when he gets left alone on his own in front. So hopefully, a better, better run race, better horses, better opposition that he'll be able to get a lead for further, um, and and it should should suit him. And some bookmakers have him in their list for the supreme novices. Is that a target you're you're looking at for him? No, not really at this day. I mean, we like to get there uh, to Cheltenham. It would be. I think if he was to run in something like the Supreme, it would have to be soft ground, it would have to be testing, um, because I think no doubt he'll, he'll get further in time, So, um, but we'll, we'll take it one step at a time, that's what we've been doing so far, and uh, hopefully he'll run well in the Tollworth next time. Well, it's two miles for the minute, but I mean, again, he'll, he'll get further in time as well, but at the moment, through the, through the winter ground, two miles is absolutely fine. And uh, at the moment, there's quotes of 25s for the Supreme, 20s for the Neptune. You wouldn't be making decisions at this oh, stage. No, of it. It's too early. We've got to we've got to get get there first. We've got to climb the ladder to warrant our place. So um, we won't be won't be getting ahead of ourselves just yet. So we've got two plans. The one's to stay over hurdles because obviously as a novice all season there's races to be won, um, and this game's all about winning what you can when you can. So. Um, that's, that's one plan. Uh, the other is to have a crack at the beach the next Saturday. Um, and then, of course, we can always revert to novice hurdles again in the new year. So um, we've got that engagement next week. No, no final decision has been made yet. The ground will come into it. He wouldn't want to run on, on really testing ground. That's probably was his undoing, um, it, at, certainly at Newbury. And, and uh, then at, at, at Air, the, the ground got, got to him as well. So. Uh, and it actually didn't really see out the trip that day. So um, that's potentially where we go next Saturday, Beach. If not, we could be uh, going to Cheltenham the following weekend for a, for a three mile novice hurdle. Is he a potential Grand National horse, do you think? Well, that's what I just touched on the, the staying, the stamina. Um, he didn't really appear to see out the, the Scottish National trip. So you'd have to have to think that would be, be a doubt. Mm -hmm. Now on to the class horse of the yard, Rock on Ruby. What's the plan for this one this season? Yeah, he. I mean, he obviously ran in the the elite at Wincanton, which was always going to be on the sharp side, two miles uh, on that track. Um, but uh, giving way to way all round, he, he he galloped all the way to the line and uh, and stayed on for third. And that's probably what where well demonstrates where we're headed is is up in trip. Um, I think. He, he was staying on all the time at Aintree in uh, April um, when he just got beat by the new one over two and a half and, and we're looking to, to run over two and a half, uh, two, yeah, two miles, half furlong at, um, or four furlongs at uh, Cheltenham on the uh, 13th in the Relkeel uh, International Day. So that's the plan at the moment. And um, again, with, with no long term targets for him, we just take it one race at a time and hopefully he can go well in that. And uh, it's actually be the first time he won't carry a penalty in a, in a hurdle race um, for, for a long time. So uh, that would be, that'd be good and we'll hopefully see him put his best foot forward. And is he still showing you the same kind of enthusiasm in the mornings? Oh, very much so, yeah, he's full of beans. Um, he's yeah, a great horse to have in the yard. Um, certainly he's been our flag bearer and, and still is. So, um, I mean, there's, the evidence is there, there's still plenty of racing in him and, and, and he's going to be, he'll main, continue to be competitive. So, uh, yeah, we look forward to, to getting him out in December. And so it could be quite a different season for him because in the last few years you've been building your campaign around yeah. the champion hurdle or yeah. last year the Arkle. So this year he hasn't got a, an obvious no, target we've at been, the festival. I mean he's obviously another year older, he's nine, rising ten. Um, we haven't put all our eggs in one basket and it's not all geared around March. It's we're gonna he's he's much more forward this year. We got on with him, he's out there ready to run and and if, if we're in good form come March, great, we'll go to Cheltenham. Um, but we're there to try and try and win races uh, throughout the season as opposed to just just having all our eggs, as I said, in one basket uh, and focusing purely on Cheltenham. Again, he won nicely on his debut over hurdles. Um, 
Um, so he is, he's, a, he's a winning point appointee, he's a real stair in the making. Um, but we, hopefully he can be very competitive in, in the good novice hurdles this season, so two and a half miles plus. And what kind of ground would he want? Nothing too uh, testing. Just, just not extremes. He wouldn't want, obviously wouldn't want quick ground. He wouldn't want really heavy testing ground. So um, anything in between would be absolutely fine. Vukova, um, only a five-year-old, finished seventh to Tak in the Soy in, in the JLT. We've not seen him since. No, and he, so his race was pretty much over at the first that day. Um, he was all but brought down, and you can't can't be on the back foot around Cheltenham. Everything's got to go to plan. So uh, he's had a good break. Um, he did did have a minor hold up in the early autumn, but he's back in full work. We're very happy with him, and he's uh, going to have an entry in the Peterborough next Sunday, and uh, hopefully a flat. Flat track, two and a half miles, would be a um, perfect starting point for him. So, dream scenario, if it all goes well in the Peterborough, where would you hope to see him? I do, he's got a King George entry, but that's, I mean, <laughs> whether we take that up or not is another thing. Um, but we've got to get, get him back out on the track first and, and go from there. Yeah. Um, so, again, it's, it's one race at a time. And again, you say flat track, so perhaps not Cheltenham. Well, I don't know, only because he won so well at Newbury last year um, and and didn't, I mean, Chelton is probably a bit unfair to, to judge him on that one run when he was, as I said, virtually brought down at first. But I just think he's got, got the inkling of flat track, seems to seems to bring out the best in him, definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, Zulu Oscar, two-time bumper winner and winner at Taunton last time out. Yeah, he um, obviously made amends for an unfortunate start over hurdles um, and, and won, won nicely. He could only win as he did. Um, he, he could go for the um, supreme trial at Ascot on the 19th. Um, that's our plan with him. He's quite a fragile horse, so we, it's just a case of trying to keep him on the road. But when he is in top form and, and we've got him sound and running, he's, he's one to keep an eye on for certain. Many punters that like to follow stats when they have a fantastic record in bumpers, 48% strike rate in them <laughs> last season. Any bumper horses that uh, viewers should particularly look out for in, in the coming months? Well, I think uh, General Ginger ran a very encouraging race um, back at Wincanton earlier on in the month, um, going down to a highly regarded horse of Paul Nichols's, and uh, he's, he could go to uh, Wincanton on, on Boxing Day and uh, hopefully he can go, go one better. And final question, if you just had to pick one from your string as a, a horse to follow for viewers through the season, who would it be? Uh, I think I've said it at the start of the season, I'll stick to it as a bit of a puzzle. So yeah, she's um, really exciting, obviously we're delighted with that win the other day and she's going to embark, as I said, on that hurling campaign and hopefully she'll, uh, she'll fly the flag.